there! Welcome to Flonigan Books. Today's video is going to be a bit differently because we're talking about lipsticks inspired by some of my favorite bookish villains. <laughs> Welcome to everybody watching today. Thank you so very much for joining me. This video is going to be about 15 lipstick colors that I'm going to be putting on my face right now to sort of chat about like my favorite sort of lipsticks that I would associate with some of my favorite bookish vill uh, villains. And this video idea is not mine. I was actually tagged by one of my followers over on my makeup channel to a channel where this lady did makeup looks inspired by books. And I thought, right, if there's a way I can combine both of my passions, books and makeup, it could be a video like this. And I thought, wouldn't it be fun to sort of like throw on lipsticks that I think go with villains? Now, I'm not that much of an association person that I'm like, ooh, this lipstick really goes with this villain. So I've just selected 15 shades from my lipstick collection that I think for your next villain cosplay, these are going to be some great shades that you can look into. And before we get to the other 14 shades, I actually wanna chat about what's already on my lips because I think this is a great contender. This is the Kiko Milano Jelly Cielo in shade 515. I uh, bought this to try out a lot of the different Kiko um, formula. So I did a video with this over on my other channel in January. And I just think that this just goes with the villain vibes for like, you know, the villains that aren't necessarily villains right off the bat kind of vibe, if you know what I mean. So there are certain villains that aren't super duper like clear cut, uh, clear cut black and white. They're somewhere in the middle. And that's the kind of lipstick shade that I would associate with those kind of characters. But there's one lipstick shade in particular where I was like, when I was sort of like thinking of this video idea and thinking of like what lipsticks to feature, there was one that I was instantly right. This goes with this book, with this villain. Hear me out, let me put it on first. So here is the shade that instigated this entire video idea. This is Velvet Midnight by Lisa Eldridge. And this I associate with the Darkling from the Shadow and Bone trilogy by Lee Bardugo. This is just, it's deep, dark, sultry. I don't just have deep, dark shades for you. There's also a couple of things that are perhaps a little bit more vibrant, but I think that if we're talking like evil, like good, good villains, I think the Darkling is one of the better ones, especially because he seems okay at first. And then as the series progresses, it just get worse. And I think that because he is the Darkling and he has created the void, that is just this fear of darkness with all of these like really scary animals that come out all the time. This I thought was perfect. And it actually makes my teeth look whiter, which I hadn't expected. Um, yeah, Velvet Midnight is a really, really pretty, like very deep saturated plum, which is not my usual fare. I used to love shades like this and I used to have a ton. Uh, Maxin is another really good option if you're looking for something. But I felt that this, this would go perfectly with some bookish villains for sure. So let me move on to the next shade. The next shade, Max Rebel. This shade I think is great for your like villainous characters. It's got darkness, it's got that purple, but it doesn't have any of the depth that Velvet Midnight has. This is definitely more of a toned down version. It goes well with the green of my shirt, I have to say. And I think this is a really fun one for the more whimsical villains in your life. So if perhaps you're looking for like, I know I, I'm, for some reason I'm really associating this with like uh, some of the like the, the fairies in like the Shadow Hunters trilogy. Like they're not necessarily evil and they're not always the bad guys because they try to help, but the way they communicate and the way their system works just makes them very unpredictable and very mischievous. And I think that this, it's also called Rebel, of course, is a great one to sort of give you that sultry, dark, but whimsical vibes at the same time. So Rebel by Mac, I think is a nice, really bookish, not necessarily bad guy, not necessarily good guy, but somewhere in the middle kind of shade. Next up is Topeless in Love from the Ultimate Matte line by Catrice. This is no longer available and mine looks horrible. 
but because this is such a great lipstick color, I actually do keep it around. It's a brown, but with a lot of purple running through it. So I'm sort of ticking off all the purpley shades first. And I definitely think that this again, is like great for your more villainous kind of characters, if that's what you're looking for. Like if you wanna bring out your inner villain, you could say. I think this is a good one. It's definitely a bit deeper than the Rebel shade did. It's got more depth. It's got a bit more warmth to it. So this is sort of like, you know, woodland creature. Um, I recently read Naomi Novik's um, The Uprooted uh, book, and this very much gives me that evil wood vibe that, she's, that they're trying to combat in that book. It's definitely giving me that, so this is a really great sort of like, it's not even a character in the book, it's more like an, an area in the book that's not having like great intentions. So this definitely goes with that vibe. Next up is Velvet Decade by Lisa Eldridge. I think that I have quite a few Lisa Eldridge lipsticks here because they're my favorite. And they just, th that line just has some really amazing shades that are a little bit different. Velvet Decade is a more brown tone version than the Topless in Love one from Catrice. This definitely has more warmth, a little bit more red to it, making it very wearable. But that's why I think this is more like your run of the mill bad guy. Um, this is not necessarily like giving you tons of character if that makes sense. Um, so this is like, I don't know why. Why am I thinking Cruel Prince by Holly Black? I'm not sure why. But that, that, this lipstick is giving me that vibe. Again, The Cruel Prince in Holly Black. I didn't read the entire series because I didn't love that first book. But it's sort of like enemies to lovers kind of thing. But I felt that it was more like because of the way the book was written and what I didn't like about it, was it a little bit too obvious that, that was gonna happen, you could say. So that's why um, that wasn't a great book, but I think the lipstick still goes with the character. Next up is Jodie Wild Moth by Gucci, in this really fun tube. And this is in their uh, Brillante uh, formula. It's a very sheer formula, a little bit shiny. And you can see as intense as it looks in the bullet, that's how sheer it goes onto the lips. So this is for that villain that doesn't seem to be a villain at first, but then it turns out to be the villain, if I'm making sense. I'm not entirely sure. So um, I can't really think of a book that has a character like it, but I've read plenty of books that have it. I'm just completely blanking right now. But yeah, this is the kind of lipstick that I associate with the the maybe the wannabe villain <laughs> or like the thing, oh yeah, in the Red Queen series, we have this like prince duo who seem to be bad guys at first, but they kind of are these great characters. I did enjoy that book series. Not a lot of people did, but I did. Um, but yeah, this is the kind of lipstick that I feel goes perfectly with the, they don't seem to be villains, but they turn out to be villains in the end kind of villains. Now this is a lipstick shade you may not associate with villains necessarily, but this is Charlotte Zellbury's Am I Kiss? I have it as Bond Girl. Um, and just because of the name, I wanted to feature it here. Sometimes they just get super creative with the names of these lipsticks. And this is not necessarily like something I associate with villains per se, but because it's linked to James Bond, I was like, that's, that's a, fictitious, a fictitious character, so we can stick that in here, right, right, right? Should have gone perhaps in the hero edition <laughs> of this video, because if you enjoy this, then, then maybe I can do a video like that in the future. Who knows? I've got plenty of lipstick to talk about, but I'm not sure if it should go into the other channel, but I'm doing it on here. Let me know in a comment down below. Another Lisa Eldridge lipstick. This is Night, Th Night Thoughts in her luxuriously lucent line. The other ones I've shown you so far were all true velvets. This is the only one I've selected from the Luxuriously Lucent line because this one, or maybe I've selected two, I'm not entirely sure. Um, but this one I think is the best because it ha it's the darkest one she does in this lineup. Again, a, sh a lipstick shade that pulls really dark in the bullet, but then on your lips, it's a lot more sheer and a lot more wearable than you might expect. This is actually the first time I'm wearing it because I haven't put this on my face just yet. I only just recently hold it a few weeks ago. And you can see that it's like this, more like, mm, it's like a reddish brown, but it also has a bit of purple running through it. So it's got a really nice blend of shades here. And this, I think, again, because it is a darker lipstick, goes perfectly with the villainous vibes. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking evil stepmother with this one. You know, evil stepmother in like Snow White, those kind of things. Yes, yes, I'm down. 
I'm down. This is Verve by MAC, and this is a lipstick that's another like brown, but with a lot of red running through it, which is why I initially bought it, but I haven't worn it much. So again, I'm sort of putting this on to remember, like to help myself remember that I own this and that it's actually really pretty on. It's again, deeper, a little bit more sultry. It's perhaps more of like a fall shade for me, rather than like spring, summer, for sure. So this is again giving me sort of like witch, woodsy vibes, but it's more on the witchy side of things for me. So, you know, the, the witches in like, I think it was in the uh, Throne of Glass series, but they weren't necessarily evil um, in terms of like the main character we were following in that storyline. And it was m one of my favorite storylines in that entire book series by Sarah J Maas. Um, the witches, um, her name was Manon, I remember that, but the, the rest of her coven and like the other covens that she deals with, are definitely um, not always having the best of intentions. So this is giving me all the witchy vibes. Next up is a metallic lipstick. This is by MAC and this is New York Apple. And I just wanna throw this on more so again for the name rather than anything else. Because if it's called New York Apple, then I was like thinking Apple, Snow White, that sort of thing. Of course, the apple itself isn't a villain, but you know, it, it, it's almost the thing that kills her. So I figured that this would be something that I could show you in here. As you can see, it's a very pretty soft red. The metallic shine isn't too much on the lips. It's actually a very nice wearable red and it's a really good entry level red if you're very afraid of red lipstick. I mean, I still have a couple to come, don't worry. But before we get to the reds, I wanted to show you this. And this is the shade Meet Me in Berlin from um, Lisa Eldridge again. It's also luxuriously lucent. See, it wasn't the only one that I was sharing with you today, the Night Thoughts one. And this is a really nice soft, like brownish shade. And this is again for, you know, um, the villainous characters in your, in your books that may not be everything that they seem. I, I'm thinking, you know, enemies, enemies to lovers can be this because there's a softness with this shade that I think some villains definitely have. I actually like it if villains have a very morally gray character rather than them just being bad, flat out, which is why I'm also struggling to think of some like good villains because overall I just like morally gray characters and they're my favorites. So I wouldn't necessarily label them villains even though they might be the bad guy. Am I making sense? I'm not sure. This is Urban Decay Gash, and this is one that's been discontinued. It's from their, um, is it, was it their Revolution? No, not their Revolution. Their Vice Lipstick range. And this is one of their cream formulas. Mine is getting a little bit old, I'm not gonna lie. It felt a little sticky going on. And I haven't worn it a whole lot because reds like this in this kind of like creamy, goes everywhere formula aren't the best. But I've always kept it around for the shade because this is a blood red in a lipstick. It's called Gash for a reason. Um, and this lipstick very much like, you know, bloody battles. So again, not necessarily linked to a particular character in a book, but like bloody battles in fantasy novels. This, this, yes, I'm here for it. And now that I've put it on, I'm like, oh, why, why haven't I worn you more? You're very stunning. It does have a bit of a sheen though. I like this one. Next up, Velvet Jazz from Lisa Eldridge. This is by far one of my favorite reds in my entire lipstick collection. And this lipstick is giving me a lot of villainous connections. It ma instantly makes me think Cruella. I think her lipstick is perhaps a touch brighter, but Velvet Ribbon, my favorite red by Lisa Eldridge is a bit too bright for it. It's very neon and not very, I think De 101 Dalmatians is set in like, you know, the 1930-ish, I think, because they do have a car. Um, so I think it's sort of set in that jazz kind of era. So this is also giving me, you know, crime boss, mafia kind of vibe. You know that lipstick that you see in black and white movies and you can't tell what shade it is? This is the kind of red I imagine them wearing in like movies from the 1930s. So this is definitely like that femme fatale kind of, you know, vibe. And that's why I wanted to feature it in today's video. But for that true, true vampy look, you need Lisa Eldridge's Velvet Myth. This is the deepest red that she does. It's got a lot more depth to it than something like Velvet Jazz. That one is my favorite because I feel it's a bit more blue tone. This has a bit more of a warmer undertone. So that's why I tend to wear Velvet Jazz more if I wanna go for the vampy Femme Vital vibe. But this is giving me like speakeasy 1920s, you know, that sort of like golden era of the mafia kind of vibe. 
that that's just what it gives me for sure. Uh, you could go Velvet Jazz or Velvet Myth, depending on your preference. And I think I like Velvet Jazz just a bit more on me, but this is still a stunning lipstick nonetheless. But we're gonna finish off with the Pièce de Résistance. <laughs> this is Nocturnal by Anastasia Beverly Hills, and this is Evil Mage. That, like, the evil sorcerer in your books, navy blue lipstick, instantly. I don't even know why I own this shade, because I don't wear this in my day-to-day -day life, but there's something about it that I like. It does make my teeth look green, especially with the green shirt, so it's not a good combination with the whole look. Um, but I remember really wanting to try like crazy lipstick colors a few years ago And this is the only one that survived after all these years um, And yeah, I think that if you're doing like some sort of like evil mage sort of co cosplay Demons than this or maybe like a black as well um, Which I do have a black come to think of it uh, from Kaleidos But yeah, so if you want to go demon then a black or a navy blue I think can work as well. I need to take this off because this is drying down and I need to go to work afterwards and I don't want to wear blue lipstick to work. So those were 15 lipsticks that I wanted to share to sort of associate it with some of my villainous characters in mind, my favorite lipsticks for villains. Let me know in a comment down below if you wanted to see me do like the hero version of this at some point, maybe that can be done. And of course, if you have any suggestions, then leave those in the comments down below. I would love to hear what kind of lipsticks you associate with villainous characters. Um, and then for now, I just wanna thank you so very much for joining me today. Thank you for watching the video. I'll be back next week with a new video and then I hope to be able to do a fashion haul for you. So thumbs up this video in the meantime and then I hope to see you next week. Bye-bye.